Thank you for the introduction and hello also from my side. Um, as I was introduced, my name is Elias Heftrich and I'm going to present you Downgrading DNSSEC, how to exploit crypto agility for hijacking signed zones. Our contributions can be summarized as follows. Um, so we did an analysis of conditions under which DNS resolvers can be forced to skip DNSSEC validation. And we found vulnerabilities affecting major DNS providers and many dependent systems on the internet. Um, we developed DNS cache poisoning attacks utilizing the attack vectors and evaluated the DNSSEC ecosystem on the internet. Uh, last but not least, uh, we explored uh, factors in the specification that promoted the vulnerabilities. My talk is structured as follows. Um, first, I'll give you an overview over DNS, DNSSEC, and the ecosystem. Then I'll talk about downgrading DNSSEC, um, give you a peek into our specification analysis, and I'll conclude my talk with, obviously, the conclusion. Okay, just to get us in one boat, uh, DNS resolution works as follows. We have a DNS client. Um, the DNS client sends a request to a recursive resolver, and the recursive resolver will then, assuming nothing is in its cache, um, go query the authoritative servers of the root zone for these values and then will be referred down the uh, DNS hierarchy uh, up to the server which has the answer to this question and the, uh, these values will then be cached and forwarded back to the client. Uh, one very prominent attack in this scenario is DNS poisoning which is an attack on DNS record authenticity. To prevent that, there's DNSSEC, um, which protects authenticity of DNS records. Um, it does not provide confidentiality, and it uses a PKI, which is aligned with the DNS for signature validation. In our studies, we measured uh, domains as well as resolvers. Uh, on the domain side, we measured the top-level domains and the Tranco top 1 million domains. And we found that uh, from the top-level domains, uh, most of them are protected, meaning they are assigned with DNSSEC and have a link to the public chain of trust. Uh, and on the Tranco side of things, it's essentially the other way around. So um, only 4% were protected. Uh, our measurements on resolvers were concerned with different populations. So we have uh, validating resolvers in the lab, popular public validating resolver services, I uh, think Cloudflare, Google Public DNS, and open resolvers, which were sampled from port scans on the IPv4 address space, and also resolvers used by web clients, which we measured using an ad network. And the open resolvers from the port scans, uh, about a quarter validated DNSSEC signatures, and uh, in the ad network population, um, about 30 percent did. How does DNSSEC algorithm agility look like? Um, we have specification here, which um, allows us to use some algorithms, for instance, RSA-based ones, ECDSA-based ones, and EDDSA-based ones. Uh, the higher the number, as a rule of thumb, uh, the newer the algorithm, the more recently it has been standardized. Um, so, yeah, it's, the agility is realized uh, in that way that uh, first the um, resolvers start supporting the algorithms, then zones get signed with them, then after some time, uh, the zones stop using them, and also the resolvers stop using them eventually thereafter. Especially there's no negotiation included here. Uh, as per the NSSEC algorithm support and resolvers, we see that the RSA-based ones, uh, seven, five to 10, and ECDSA, uh, 13 and 14, are supported by the very most resolvers. And the EDDSA-based algorithms, um, yeah, support is present, but not ubiquitous, ubiqu everywhere, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on the domain side of things, uh, the TLEs make use mostly of algorithm 8, which is an RSA-based one, and uh, in the Tranco Top 1 million domains, which we find protected, um, the very same algorithm 8 and also the ECDs A-based 13 is prominently supported. You can find more measurements in the paper. So, let's see how we downgrade a DNSSEC. Our attacker model is an on-path attacker which is positioned between the resolver and the authoritative name server. Um, yeah, note that uh, this is essentially the threat model against which DNSSEC ought to protect. Um, yeah, our attack has two ingredients. First, we disable DNSSEC validation by, man by manipulating the chain of trust, and uh, then the attacker injects the poisonous payload. 
How do we, how do we manipulate the chain of trust? Uh, we have developed four attack vectors. Um, I just call them A, B, C, and D here, and we will have a look at one in a second. We applied the attack vectors to single algorithm domains and dual algorithm domains. Um, single algorithm domains are the most frequent ones. Uh, more than 99% of the protected Trunco domains use it. And dual algorithm domains we tested had one supported and one unsupported algorithm. The goal here of the attack vectors A to C is forcing the resolver along an unsupported validation path. How would that look uh, in a chain of trust? Um, so we have uh, here a parent zone and a child zone. Um, our trust anchor, which is uh, either a digest or a copy of a DNS key record, uh, usually that of a root zone, but just for illustration purposes here, it's the um, parent domain. The DNS key record carries the um, public key material, which is used for signature validation. Uh, signatures are carried in signature records, RR6, and um, these can be used to authenticate the um, zone data generally. So uh, here, for instance, a DS record, which is also a DNSSEC record. DS records contain a digest of a DNS key in the child domain and thereby linked to the child domain. So in this example, we now have authenticated a DNS key record of the child domain and can construct our chain of trust to the target records which we want to authenticate. Using attack vector A now, the uh, situation looks a bit different. Uh, we see in the child zone uh, the signatures covering our target records have been stripped off from the perspective of the resolver on the domain. And so there's only the unsupported algorithm 15 here. Um, and essentially the resolver is forced along that unsupported validation path. We evaluated the vulnerabilities and uh, found in the lab that Windows Server is vulnerable against B and C, tested on all platform versions, so we had more of them. Um, the vulnerable popular open resolver services were OpenDNS, Cloudflare, and Google, and Google was vulnerable against A and D. Note that D applied especially also to uh, single algorithm domains, and uh, the attack vectors A to C were found effective on dual algorithm domains only. So we investigated those on a larger scale, and um, here we see that um, the attack vector A is the most effective ones in both populations. Mind the scales, it's not equal. Um, and attack vector B is the least um, frequently working one. We also see that um, in our latest measurements, uh, after disclosures, the vulnerability statistics have decreased drastically, uh, which is an indication uh, that, we, um, that the vulnerable resolvers we measured were all operated, or the vast majority of it were, were operated um, by the providers which we are, we are finding vulnerable in the study before. How do we use it for DNS cache poisoning? So um, first we have, um, we have four DNS cache poisoning attacks constructed using those. Attack vectors, which is manipulating the records in the answer responses in which the attacker simply injects a poisonous answer record. Um, then there, we have hijacking a secure domain here, the attacker manipulates answer responses for an attacker triggered authoritative uh, NS type request. So, in effect, then the victim resolver will send follow up requests directly to the attacker. Then we have hijacking secure delegation. Uh, here, the attacker injects a DS record for an attacker owned DNS key um, to take over the DNS sec of the domain and disabling secure delegation in which the attacker injects DS records entirely not supported by the resolver to disable the DNS sec of the domain. So if all DNSSECs which the resolver encounters are unsupported, it is allowed by specification to not apply validation then. Talking about specification, um, first, what was the attack surface which we exploited? So the algorithm number field in the signature records is effectively unprotected um, because it's used by the resolver before validating the signature. And this allows the attacker to manipulate the algorithm number. Then um, algorithm presence is out of scope of NSEC and its variations. Um, NSEC uh, is essentially the authenticated denial of existence mechanism built into the NSEC, which ought to protect that an attacker can not just simply remove records from responses and uh, thereby pretend that they don't exist. Um, but as I said, uh, algorithm presence granularity does not apply here. So uh, that leaves the attacker with an opportunity to strip off specific NSEC records. 
There are some uh, requirements on algorithm presence in the RFCs. Um, for instance, one core RFC, or that is a, a one core RFC, mandates the DNSSEC record presence for signature algorithms in zones. It says as soon as there is an algorithm in the DS, it must also be in the DNS key. And if there is an algorithm in the DNS key, there must also be signature records on all zone data um, from that algorithm. This was essentially a step in through the right direction, but uh, follow-up specification explicitly declared uh, this to not apply to resolvers. So we suggest as a fix to require resolvers to insist on presence of at least one supported algorithm according to, to the follow-room rule. Um, if there's a supported TS, the resolver must support on, uh, insist on a supported DNS key. And if there's a supported DNS key, the resolver must also insist on supported signature records on all obtained zone data and uh, specifically also send a server failure to the client if that criterion is heard. Another issue we found was overloaded core terminology. Um, we have the validation states. Uh, the, these have differing definitions in two of the core RFCs. And this also has been noticed in follow-up specification, but um, actually never been reconciled. So one RFC even explicitly leaves it open whether it should be reconciled at all, uh, or dependents just define their way out of it. Um, the states are declared important, but they miss clear specification of meaning and their consequences. And in effect, uh, this issue forces developers to settle for one or come up with their own interpretations. Again, you can find further issues and explanations in our paper. Okay, I'll come to the conclusion. Um, actually, cryptographic agility is an important feature for, fu for future-proofing DNSSEC. But as we've seen, it also exposes to, exposes to new attacks. Um, specification generally needs to be balanced between implementation freedom and clear requirements, uh, specifically in DNS, because in DNS, developers are strongly incentivized to favor robustness over security. But in this case, uh, more of the latter would have certainly prevented vulnerabilities. Okay, that's it. Thank you for your attention.